You've been hunting the winter skinwalker for weeks. You track him across a frozen lake. And while walking across that frozen lake, you plunge through. In the water, you lose your rifle. There it's embraced by the water for the rest of its life. You barely crawl out with your life. Hypothermia begins to set in when you hear it. On the bank, obscured by the fog, the little clicks of its talons, it's coming. You quickly draw your pistol, but in the sub-zero temperatures, is it gonna work? Is it gonna freeze? Will you survive this encounter today on Grand Thumb? We answer this question once and for all. Now, before we get into it, we have to thank the biggest sponsor of this channel, the biggest sponsor of the channel being the Sonoran Desert Institute. If you're looking to get into gunsmithing, they are the people to go and check out. Go and check them out, link right below. A big thank you to them, very based. Thank you, Sonoran Desert Institute. And of course, the sponsor for this video, our sponsor for this video, Conflict of Nations. A big thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Let's talk about it. Conflict of Nations is a free to play real-time strategy game. Choose a real country and lead in modern global warfare. Up to 128 players and battles that can take up to a week to complete. Of course, any strategy game requires strategy on your part. Use different units, anything from tanks, submarines, infantry, and make sure that you perfect your strategy. Now the question is, will you be a man of peace or will you be a man of war? You can declare war or ally with your friends. Choose your own strategy, take over the world, engage in epic battles, and my favorite part is of course playing with the boys. Get out there, it is an awesome game, and a big thank you to them for sponsoring. We have the link right below. Now of course when you click on the link below, you do get a gift. You get 13,000 gold coins in one month of free premium subscription. It is only good for 30 days. Get down there, click the link. Big thank you to Conflict of Nations. Ladies, gentlemen, I've often forgotten, but most certainly not by me. Frozen handguns, welcome to the channel. So we are just at freezing here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest, which means it's gonna take a long time for these guys to freeze solid. Therefore, we're going to use dry ice in order to freeze these pistols more quickly. In any case, talk is cheap, ammunition is expensive. Let's go check out these pistols and shoot them, make sure that they work, and then we're gonna freeze these guys. Tonight's forecast. A freeze is coming. The question is, why am I wearing full kit? Well, I don't know what's gonna happen when I freeze these pistols and shoot them. Honestly, who can predict anything? I wanna survive, so we're full PPE today because nobody outranks safety, most especially us here on Grantham. All right, starting off, we have a Beretta M9, no modifications. Let's see if it works. She is good. Next up, we have the Browning High Power. She is also good. We have the SIG M18, current issue of the United States military. All right, that is good. Next up, we have the CZ SP01. Let's see how it works. She is also good to go. Next up, my favorite gun, Gen 3 Glock 17. She is good to go. M&P 2.0. She is good. Cicado 2011, because uh, I don't know. I wonder how it does. It costs so much money. It should work, right, Micah? It'll work. Okay, we'll see. That is smooth. Next up, Steyr, because uh, we gotta give him some love, you know? It's a weird handgun. Really weird handgun. She is good. This one I'm sad about. Nighthawk 1911 A1 Enforcer. And 45 ARP. Get it? It's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna shut up. Okay, next up, the venerable Heckler & Koch USP-45. She is good. <laughs> we have the partially frozen Desert Eagle. It's 
took a sacrifice for the thumbnail. It did. I don't think that this thing's gonna work, by the way, once we douse it in water and freeze it. God. Oh. Okay, and finally, Smith & Wesson competitor in 44 Magnum. Well, guess what? Everything is working. The world is right. But in our quest for the Skinwalker, these weapons have gotten very drenched. So we will see if they work. Oh, this feels so wrong. Why does this feel wrong? It looks wrong. That's <laughs> I can't stop it. It's just going out. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way. All right, do we like shake them off and then freeze them? No, dude, you think you get to shake it off when a skinwalker is coming for you, dude? You hear about that new Amazon delivery service where a skinwalker will come and deliver it to you? Incredible. I know. Okay. Dude, honestly, so we're not getting anything into the barrels because, um, well, I don't want to die. But uh, these guns are drenched. It's certainly in the actions. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to put it in this dry ice right here. And we're going to see how this goes. Uh, we're going to show you how cold this guy is. So I actually don't think that this is like a earthly test. This is like, can your weapon work on Neptune? Because dry ice is like negative 78 degrees Fahrenheit, I think, somewhere right around there. Is that correct? It's cold. It's cold. All right, here we go. Dude, this is ridiculous. This is actually a ridiculous test. You realize that, right? This is psychotic. Just breathing in carbon dioxide, dude. That's how we die. You think there's any possibility of these guns somehow going off? Uh, no. You don't think so? If anything, it's them up. It should. How quickly do you think these guns are gonna freeze? I'm thinking that this is probably going to be the case. You hear that? Yeah, they're freezing over right now. That's scary. I don't think this is safe. All right, let's freeze them. Let's see what happens. So these guys were in for seven minutes and they have, um, pretty sure they've died of hypothermia. Um, these are very cold guns. So this is subarctic conditions. Is your pistol going to work? after it gets a little bit of water on it, and then it freezes. Today on Grantham. Okay. All right, first off, the uh, decocker on the Breda M9 is frozen solid. It is hammer back right now. Okay. Okay. One more time. Okay. One more. Come on, give me another go. Nope. So it would appear that the firing pin is completely frozen solid and is uh, not allowing anything to occur. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to move this one off the table. We're going to render it safe and then we'll continue the test. Okay, stand back. Got it. Yep, you ready? Yep. Okay, we have rendered the weapon safe with some uh, water, so maybe you squirted some of your water your camel pack, like, Pugh! let's see if it works now. Skinwalker's dead. Bread M9 for the win. Have a camel back on you. Next up, the fully frozen Browning High Power. Okay. Okay, safety is frozen in the off position, 
which is helpful because it is super frozen. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that trigger released, hammer didn't drop. We're not gonna play that game. We're gonna go ahead and render this guy safe as well. All right, we've cleared the weapon out with warm water from our Camelback. Let's see if it works now. So I think we're seeing a trend here with our hammer fired gun so far where the hammer or the firing pin spring is uh, getting frozen, which is understandable. I definitely believe that we're probably not gonna have a single weapon work given these temperatures. Micah, what do you think? I don't know. You gotta uh, think that the uh, hammer itself is actually exposed to the water versus these striker fires, they are not. That's a good point. All right, we have the <laughs> M18, the Acro P1 still working. Enclosed red dots, incredible, absolutely incredible. Uh, let's see if the Surefire, Surefire is dead. That's okay. All right, let's go and see if this guy works right here. Striker fire, let's go, baby. All right, let's, let's, let's do it. Yo! Our, our hammer fire gun? Yo, the M18! Everyone talked mad shit on it. They're like, this gun couldn't have passed trials. Well, you know what? The M18 just... Like, these guns are frozen. All right, let's go. Sire. Ah. No, that guy is. See the trigger pull? No. It might yeah. try, like, breaking some of the ice okay, off. Okay, we're gonna try that. Yeah. Allow me to break the ice. Yeah. That gun doesn't have a safety, right? No, no safety on this gun. Um, I'm not This gun isn't quite. Let's see if I can. Okay, so I'm able to move the slide. That's good. That trigger is. Frozen solid, ladies and gentlemen. Dude, I've seen how many push-ups you can do. Give it one more try. Or pull-ups, my bad. Yeah, I'm a monster. Send it. Ugh, fuck, dude. I'm trying, man. That guy's gone. Okay, we're gonna try some of the warm water. Um, this could also be a case where it's not the gun's fault. You know, if the water really got into that mechanism, it's just it's the way it goes. Charlie. The back right there on that striker mechanism. Not Keep too much on your hands. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Good. Okay. Try it one more time. Whew. So it really just needed to. That trigger mechanism was just frozen solid, dude. I got a question though. Yeah. How are your pistols freezing, but your Camelback isn't? Your Camelback? Yeah, the one you're spitting the water on to unfreeze your gun. So in an Arctic environment, that's actually a good question. What you do is you actually keep the water inside your layers to keep it warm. It's the only environment that you're going to do that. There's, of course, a risk of it breaking, but every time I've done Arctic, yeah, keep it in your layers in some form or fashion. That way it stays liquid. Uh, for sustainment, you add snow to it as you're going or ice, allow that to melt, perpetual water source. <laughs> All right, CZ. Technology, dude, this is so cold. Okay, technology. So we decocked it before we started. So the question is, can the hammer go back? Okay, hammer went back. Here we go. Yo. Oh. Okay, okay, but that almost, that fired. Almost. Okay, so unfortunately, that magazine release isn't working. Question is, slide release, good. 
Okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. Not bad. Oh boy. This is mine right here. This is my favorite carry gun. So the red dot still works. Trijicon RMR is pretty incredible. All right, let's try this guy. I don't think it's gonna work, man. Trigger? Yeah. I kinda had a feeling. Yeah, man. Oh, fuck. Dude, I'm trying. I can't even disengage the, the safety on that guy. Really? Yeah. Okay, come on, smack it. I'm really sad about this because I love this gun. This is an unreasonable test, but I'm a little sad. Hey, Charlie, just hit it right on the trigger mechanism. It's right on the trigger. Okay, good. Okay, we just give it a second of water to unfreeze it. Pretty sure this will work. Yo. It seems that these weapons with the safeties on the triggers seem to be really binding up. I find that because the, uh, the Steyr also had that. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, the SIG has a manual safety, so it doesn't yeah. have that. Yeah, huh? okay, let's try it. <sighs> Come on, baby. <sighs> okay, let's go ahead and let's water it. So, unfortunately, it looks like the Glock was the uh, victim of that trigger safety, which I think we're gonna have the same problem with the MMP right here. All right. Okay, because it has a hinge trigger. And the safety works. MNP, dude. MNP. So hinge trigger, it could power through that ice. You have, the, it, you have leverage on it. Okay, people are gonna freak out. That doesn't make the guns that, okay, just because a gun fails this test doesn't mean it's a bad gun. This is a crazy test, this is academic. Don't get your head wrapped up around it. For real though, because I carry a Glock 17 personally, because it's right up against my body, or Is even this on my. Coke? <laughs> HK USB. Okay, so we decocked it. Let's see, the decocker is definitely frozen. Hammer. So there seems to be a bit of ice that is formed at the portion of the sear that is where it releases. So it's currently unable to hold the hammer all the way back or for me to do a double action pull through it. We're gonna try again now. Okay, let's get some water on it. it. Must be in the trigger mech. Yeah, it's in the trigger mechanism. We're gonna give it a little bit more water. Thanks, Charlie. You're doing great, buddy. Thanks, dude. You look great, too. Do I? Yeah. Or how are your hands? That's what I'm worried about. Um, I'm actually okay. I've got the uh, all the layers on, on my gloves. I, um, I'm good. You know, I've done some Arctic stuff, dude. Hammer locked back. All right, she's good. So, well, 
kind of good. All right, HK USP got a bit ice in the mechanism and uh, went down. Wow, we got some really expensive guns right here. So as you can see, the if you're worried, like the table is frozen, guys. Like it, it is freezing out here. All right, we have the Nighthawk 1911. Hey, Surefire works. All right, safety came off. This might happen. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, so bit of ice inside the trigger mechanism there. Let's try that one more time. <clears throat> okay. Smack it? Yeah, let's try it, give it a shot. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and give her some water. It, it, I think it was frozen to be honest. The grip safety? Yeah, I think the grip safety is a problem on the 1911. There it is. Grip safety. I think we're gonna see the same problem with the um, Staccato, if I'm being honest, because it also has a grip safety and I'm guessing that, oh, depressed. Okay, staccato. That's safety. Ugh. Okay, I got the safety off. What are we doing, dude? Okay. Nope. Okay, we got a small click, not, no movement. We're gonna go ahead and render this guy safe. Small possibility because we might have had a release. It'll go off. Okay, try this one more time. Okay, um, 1911s, probably not it. Oh boy. Oh Yo, boy. I do not want to, man. Okay. Good luck. <clears throat> Use a barricade? Dude. No, because it could release. That's a no-go, man. Um, that hammer is frozen, dude. Um, that hammer can't move, nothing's happening. Trying this again? Nope. Cylinder didn't move, man. It's out. Yep, that's out. Okay, let's try this. Jesus, more. Back the hammer. Okay, there we go. Okay, gun is under safe. Um, so what happened, so you can see is when we pulled the hammer back, uh, cylinder didn't turn with it. As you can see, when I cock that hammer back, that cylinder moves as it lines it up. So the last thing you want to do is have um, something go wrong when it comes to cylinder movement on a revolver. So we're not going to screw with that. Okay, next up is the Desert Eagle. Frozen as hell. The monster. Hammer's back. Safety is on. Safety came off. I think this one's going, dude. <laughs> oh, fuck. Come on, baby. Come on. Son of a bitch. You're a smack? Yeah. Okay, so slide's moving freely. It can fire. This is 100% all the trigger mechanism. Okay. Oh, come on. 
So, okay, that's as much as I'm comfortable doing. Yeah. <sighs> what do I do to myself? All right. Trigger. See if she's working at this point. Cool. A little malfunction there. Well, what a freaking test, dude. What a test, Micah. What do you think, dude? Um, I'm just a little curious why the pistol trigger mechs are a little more fragile than AR. Like, with the AR, we had some trigger problems, but not... We had a lot of trigger problems with the AR, man. Did we? Oh, that's cold. If you base your personality or your weapon choice off of this test, fuck you. So... We found a lot of very interesting things that occurred in this test. To start off with, when we pulled these firearms from the atmosphere of Neptune, where they had been frozen for a thousand years, I did not believe that one, there was gonna be any chance in hell that they were gonna fire. Micah, did you think they were gonna fire? Psychotic. No, I dude, they didn't want to do the test. No, I, and two, I thought I was gonna die. I legitimately thought one of these guns was just gonna shear off and kill me or, or something, but none of those things happened. In fact, we had some very interesting results. So to start off with, when we first fired the M9, we began to see a pattern. And that pattern being that with our weapons that had exposed hammers, this introduced a potential point of failure. And the reason for that is, is that they're exposed to the elements. So in our weapons with uh, had exposed hammers such as the M9, the Browning High Power, especially the 1911s, you're just seeing a lot of issues with that because that ice can easily clog that mechanism up. Another problem that we saw was with the safety mechanism. So although they're meant to keep you safe, they introduced a lot of problems. So in the case of the 1911s, we had the grip safeties that just really ended up jamming those guns up. But more interestingly, when we got into our striker fired weapons, such as the MP 2.0, the champion of this particular test, we have a firing mechanism that is more enclosed and that is safe from those elements. However, we only had two of the four striker fired weapons work well. The question is why? 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 So on the MP 2.0, as we clear it, to fire it, when you pull that trigger, you can see that that safe action system, which is much like a Glock, it hinges back right there. So it, you have a lot of leverage, a lot of fulcrum to pull through it. So you're able to defeat that safety with a lot of that force. Same thing with the M18, except in this case, it is a simple safety. So double checking that guy right there. So we simply disengage the safety on the M18, and then we have a trigger pull. As you can see, that trigger is hinging. We have a lot of leverage in order to pull and fire that mechanism. Now on the Glock, you can see that our trigger mechanism right there for our safety is pretty small and it's very easy to get ice up inside that mechanism and jammed it right up. And we have pretty much an identical system on the Steyr. So that is what, come on baby, that is what happened with those particular weapons. Very interesting. Now with the revolver, I do want to point out that a lot of backcountry hikers and hunters carry a revolver, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. They are awesome weapons. In this case of this very extreme test, um, the cylinder was no longer able to work, and the weapon was unsafe to fire. So don't, again, don't take this the wrong way. Revolvers are awesome. Don't stop carrying them. Um, when it comes to the Desert Eagle, it's just kind of a piece of shit, so that's just par for the course.